it's about two young people, um, they, they seem younger than they are, but, um, two young people who uh, lock themselves up, as you can see, in um, a house. They don't go anywhere. I suppose you kind of say they're agoraphobic in a sense, um, and they eat a lot of chocolate and reminisce or fantasize about another life. Um, my character then comes in with my friend and stirs it up a bit. I think a, a way of saying it that Philip Ridley may say is about it's about two people or a character that has is full of fear and another character who I'm playing who is without. I suppose he's a bit of a showman, you know, or in one sense a ringmaster. He comes in, he takes control of the space and and sees these two people and thinks, what the hell is going on? Um, and it dictates and terrorizes and, and bullies and investigates. He himself, his history is dubious. I mean, I made up my own thing for him, <laughs> but his history is very dubious and he doesn't really go into great detail. We do know that he's kind of cut off his parentage, whereas, and he's a polar opposite to these two characters that are obsessed with their parents. Psychologically, he's very violent, so he kind of terrorizes using words. It was, yeah, it was quite difficult to get into. I think technically it, it was quite hard for me. There's a lot to say. There's a lot to say. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot to do with physicality. So I kind of went in through that way. I suppose really what's wonderful is that Philip really has given me so much to say. He's given these two characters, or the four of us eventually, such a dynamic that um, it's in the text. No, I, honestly, I'm like the, the one in the cast is like a complete newbie. I think someone else is already in the Pitchfork Disney in, in Italy. Um, and I think um, another cast member said it's his favourite writer. And you know, so I, I'm a newbie. Yeah. I've heard of it. It's like a, a, a big like drama mm -hmm. school monologue piece, although I didn't use it. Um, but yeah, I heard of it and it's seen it in lots of books and so on. But I, I've not read it and obviously I've not seen it. So um, that was... It was a bit of a shock. There are certain bits of it that obviously aren't as shocking, perhaps, to an audience. Perhaps those elements aren't as, as shocking, but I still think it's quite unusual. I mean, there is an element of it that is quite unusual. Mm. It has this issue of fear, and as humans, we're never going to stop fearing. Mm. You know, we're never going to stop fearing what's beyond the door. Mm. So I think it is relevant. When you start up there, your your fear is that you you're gonna like you're gonna start slipping down. So that is the challenge. And some some nights I know that I started there and I've been lived down there. And you know you kind of think better tomorrow. It's like an organic, you know, a very alive thing. Um, but yeah, literally I start up there. <laughs> so um, that is the challenge. I would say it was precarious. Um, I'd say it was dangerous, and I'd say that um, I'm well insured. It was really, really difficult. I began quite slowly. You know, Ed Dick, our director, was really, really helpful and very, very encouraging. And also kind of just steered me when I was going wrong. Having done a lot of television in the past, I hadn't, this is my first play in three years, which doesn't sound very long, but it's quite a long gap in terms of yeah. what you're doing and the muscles <laughs> you're using. He kind of was just like, you know, turn, turning me up a little bit, speak a bit louder. This is not TV. So um, there was a lot of, I mean, that's on the baseline stuff. So a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and just using the language, it's, it's just all so let so visceral. Mm -hmm. you know, the imagery and the language is amazing. Yeah. So why not use it? It's the sounds. You can hear people cough and breathe and rattle, crisp, move in their chairs. All sorts <laughs> of different things that um, I haven't really been, I haven't encountered for three yeah. years. So it's like you know, the first few performances, I was like, oh. oh. You're there. You're meant <laughs> to be there, um, and you're alive, and that's great. So um, that was quite that was quite tough. And and then the first laugh is just you know, I don't know. It's like really, yeah, it's really nostalgic. Mm -hmm. like, wow, I remember this. No preference. There are peaks and troughs to both. A certain thing. You know, to be honest with you. This isn't a preference. I just don't like getting up in the morning. I really hate it. So <laughs> filming. You get up at like you know, five or thirty sometimes. So what's nice about theatre is after the rehearsal period, I can lie in. That's a benefit. It's a trivial benefit, but I have no preference. What's nice is that this is it's quite leisurely. I think you're filming. For as, as fun as it is, you know, you've got a time aspect. You're constantly clock watching, saying we've got to get the scene done. 
because we're going to move on, we're going to go to a different location, blah, blah, blah. Um, and what's really nice is that you kind of just concentrate on performance here and, you know, it's, yeah. it's a different, it's a completely different pace. Have I got any dream roles I would like to play? I would love to play, um, I'd love to do some American again, there's some like James Baldwin plays. I need to do some classical. There's a lot of different things, yeah, Edgar and, and King Lear, there's loads. Oh.